Good morning, good morning, good morning, and how are you this Monday morning? It is Monday morning. Ah, can you believe it? I'm all twisted up here. Monday morning. For those of you keeping track of the days, it's Monday morning. Um, I did forget to put Monday morning motivational medicine talk on the, on the title here. Uh, but that's pretty much what it is, is this is a channeled message. Actually, do you know, every live video I do, every message I do is channeled because when I prepare for it, I, I ask, what, what do you want me to speak about? What is it that somebody needs to hear? And this morning, it's about comparing yourself to others. Why, why that just isn't, isn't going to work and why it needs to stop. Okay. So I don't know if, if maybe somebody's sitting at home comparing themselves to others, or maybe they're wanting to get going on a business or a, or a relationship or something like that. And they're comparing themselves to others. I mean, I know I've been there in the past where I thought, why is it working out for so-and-so and not me? Why is it working out for other people and not me? And you know, the biggest thing is, is that we have to take ownership. We have to take control. Basically, I'm a horse person, so you have to take the reins of your own life, right? And, and what somebody else is living is not what you're living, okay? Good morning, good morning, everyone. So good morning, good to see you here, Danielle, Donna, awesome. So the thing is, is that, you know, you could be an identical twin and you'll have different experiences still in life, right? You have different perceptions. Nobody's, nobody's living your life but you. And, and that was a big thing for me when I was coming out of the abuse and stuff that I realized I couldn't make people happy because that was their job, right? I couldn't do what they wanted me to do because that was, they were looking for something on the outside. I had to look on the inside if I was going to find my peace and happiness. And I had to quit looking to other people, right? Yes, other people can inspire us, but comparing ourselves to them and saying that, you know, that, oh, they've got this or they've got that isn't going to work. And it, and it just brings you down. It brings you down into a, a negative state, into uh, negative emotions, beating yourself up. Um, I, I want to tell you that that you're a divine being, okay? You're a divine being and and this is not your natural state, okay? Is to bring yourself down, is to, is to think poorly of yourself, comparing yourself to others, okay? Being in a divine state means to flow, means to flow and let go, means to, to accept your divinity, to, to realize how amazing and creative and magnificent you are because you are. So you know you're so amazing that you actually came to earth to live. And not only that, you came to live during this time, during 2020. <laughs> you, know, you came to earth during a time when human evolution is just off the charts, insane and, and in a good way, in a good way, actually in a great way. So give yourself a pat on the back for that, right? That you're here. So this channeled message that I got today for you, I'm so glad that you showed up by the way, because if you're watching this, I know it's going to reach you and maybe you need, maybe you need it. Maybe you need to hear it for somebody else and you'll share this. I don't know, but this comparing ourselves with others, it, it needs to stop because in our life, we have a circle of people around us. It may be a big circle. It may be a small circle. And the thing is, is that, that yes, we influence each other, but the thing about the circle is, is that it's our circle. Okay. It's what makes us unique. Okay. And, and we can be inspired. There's a difference between inspiration and comparing, right? Inspiration encourages you to go within. It, it encourages you to go within and pull up those reserves you have and, and be more, do more, whatever it is you want, right? Personally, professionally, whatever. It's all the same. It's all personally. Spiritually, still personally, right? It inspires you to go within like that. Comparing yourself, comparing yourself puts you in a compartment. It puts you in the box that that other person is in, okay? It puts you in that, in that, in their shoes, so to say, right? 
But you see, you haven't lived their life. You haven't done what they've done. Um, you haven't had their experiences. And they haven't had yours, right? So when you compare yourself, take, you know, you, you're squishing yourself in. You're squishing yourself in. I, it reminds me, I'm, I'm Canadian, so um, uh, what's that So Ah! Maybe some other Canadian can help me out here and put it in the comments, but I'm squishing, I'm squishing, I'm squishing your head. <laughs> you know, like, it's putting you in a box, right? And when you were meant to like shine, when you were meant to like explode with light, when you when you're came here to express yourself, you came to earth to express yourself. So why would you want to compare yourself with someone else and push yourself into their box, right? You came here to be an expression, to express. Good morning, hey April. Yes, I dislike boxes and limitations, me too. Me too. And so you came here to express yourself, not to say, oh, Susie did it this way and Johnny did it that way and therefore I'm beating myself up because I should have this done by now or I should be this way. No, no. You're perfect the way you are. Yeah, you know, there's, a, there's a saying that the perfect time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next perfect time is now. This is your now. Whatever it is you have on your heart, this is your now, okay? Because it doesn't matter. Whatever is meant for you, be it personally or professionally or whatever, it is for you, okay? It's for you. And it'll happen when it happens, when you're ready, when your vibration matches up with it, okay? It will. It will. All right. Now, there's other things you can do for it, right? Like um, even this morning I was talking with a friend and um, and I, I tell this to quite a few people because I've done it myself of making a list of what I want in something that I'm manifesting, right? Could be a relationship or something. Um, could be anything. A house could be um, your career. Um, anything make a list of everything that you desire but make it in present tense right live that because it's for you it's for you to live you don't put yourself in a box you put yourself out there okay and when you make this list you're putting yourself out there you're putting yourself out there you're putting your energy out there you're saying here I am world here I am Right? Did you feel those shivers go up? Yeah, I just felt shivers go up. Maybe the truth bumps were just awesome. Now, when you get going and you're stopping comparing yourself to others and you're, you're, you're stepping into what your power is, you might have to give some things up. You might have to give up some thoughts that, you, that have kept you stuck before. Some ideals or thoughts or beliefs from school, from family, from wherever that kept you stuck, okay? And these might challenge you. These might challenge you, and that's okay, all right? Because that's gonna help you grow. So when I asked today what I was supposed to speak on, and this is what I'm supposed to speak on, is comparing yourself, and how to, why this needs to stop is, is because how incredibly magnificent you are, and I'm feeling into that how incredible you are that you chose to come during this time. I don't think we honor that enough. You know, I don't, I don't think <clears throat> you're a sacred being. I'm a sacred being. And I don't think that we honor that enough. So I'm going to take a minute here and just going to breathe into that. And, and if you're driving, just pull over. Um, but what are you doing on Facebook, by the way, if you're driving? <laughs> you know? That's a whole other video. <laughs> Anyways, just take a moment and really think about how special you are that you walk the face of this planet at this time, okay? That you walk the face of the planet this time, that you chose this time. 
And, and, and you know, if, it's, if this is a new belief for you, great, breathe it in. Just breathe it in. And breathe out. And when you let it go out, imagine it taking all the other thoughts with it that is stopping that. And when you breathe in, how amazing it is that you're alive at this time. And letting that air go out. Do you know, breathing can, can help you a lot on your journey. Um, of course, there's breath work exercises, but I want to bring you right back to the first thing you did when you were born. Whether it was C-section, whether it was like um, a natural birth, however. Doesn't matter whichever way you came into this world. The first thing that you did was you took a breath. And if you needed help breathing, they helped you, right? So that is how important breath is. And so when you need to, take a deep breath just to calm your mind, calm your body. Remember who you are. You chose to be alive during this time. You chose to walk the planet at this time. You're amazing. You're abundant. You're wonderful. You know, when you find yourself comparing yourself to others, you can take that breath too. Oh, Megan, awesome. Needed this this morning. Awesome. I'm so grateful that when I ask for what message to come, that it's always the right message for someone. I'm so blessed for that. So, and you know, Megan, there might be a reason too that I've been holding off because I was preparing for this and I pulled three cards for it. And I'm going to go into those right now. So this is awesome. Yes, yes, Crystal, awesome. All right, so we're going to go into this right now. And I want you to remember that to breathe whenever you find yourself, especially when you find yourself comparing yourself or getting upset that something isn't happening in the time that you think it should happen. Um, just take those deep breaths, okay? And and remember that, that that how amazing it is and that you know what what's meant for you is for you so whether it happens now or whether it happens in the future it's still going to happen okay going back to that quote the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago the second best time is now all right so whatever tree you're planting is your tree all right so let's go into these i pulled these cards i'm gonna i'm just gonna read off the card and then i will read out of the book and this is the mystical shaman oracle um book ah card deck all right so the first card i pulled for you this morning if this is resonating with you and if it isn't that's okay you know um and and if you're still watching maybe share it with somebody who who needs to hear this message so the first thing is is um the vision quest okay and what i love about this card for this message is is like now i got to get the pen the pen working here um, is she's like flowing her arms up like this and she's just, oh, just freeing herself right up and sort of like leaning forward and dancing into it, right? Flowing with it and look at all the sparkles coming off of her of magic. It's like she's released herself from, from those ties that bind her to her problems. She just doesn't, she doesn't care about comparing herself. She doesn't care about anything holding her back. She's ready to plant that tree, right? And I, and I love it. So the vision quest comes in. And, and we all have a vision in our life. There's always something that we're working on or we're wanting, desiring, right? And that's what that vision quest is. That's what that vision quest is. And I love it that there's, I'm trying to go around the circle here. I'm gonna go like this instead of trying to do it off the camera. So I love it that there's, you know, whatever this is to you, it could be a planet, it could be a moon, it could be the sun. Um, could be all of those right but the magic of new beginnings everything comes around in a circle and a circle is complete and you come around and you go deeper and you go deeper again right and that's what that's saying to me i also love i'm seeing again here that she has a um heart great big heart on her chest i don't even know if it's a she or a he i'm saying she maybe because that's what's speaking to me right now okay but if you're feeling a he then it's a he who cares right we all have masculine and feminine in us, and uh, it's just a representation of whatever we need it to be. So that's beautiful. That is a beautiful thing. Uh, let's see here. Whoop. 60. 
All right, so in this book, there's three different sections. There's the essence, the imitation, and the medicine. And I will read all of those, okay? Because some of it might resonate with you. In the vision quest, you face your fear, embrace your mortality, and then meet face to face with spirit. When we feel stagnant, a vision quest brings our lives into perspective. We realize our flaws, our potential, and the opportunities life is now offering us. We remain on a vision quest until we find the key to open a new door or write a new chapter in our lives. You know, and that, that brings up something too, is if you've been on a journey that all of a sudden things have changed and maybe you're on a different timeline, maybe things have changed for you, that's okay. That's okay, go with it. Because maybe that's the direction you're supposed to be taking. Things have been shifting, right? So, and, and I just pulled that out because I remember when I was preparing about this, I forgot to say about that. But when I just read now that we remain on a vision quest until we find the key to open a new door or write a new chapter in our lives. There's always new chapters, okay? All right, the invitation. Find clarity by spending time alone in nature. If you live in a city, go for a walk in a park. If you live in the country, make sure that you spend time outside in contemplation. Get off the couch, get away from your desk, go outside. Spirit helps those who help themselves, so set your intention and ask nature for a guiding vision for your life. Now, I know that might be challenging that for some of us, I, if, maybe if you're in a city and you're not allowed to leave your house or something, um, there's always meditation, visualization, um, put on a... Put on a uh, I don't know, uh, African safari on your TV or your computer or something like that and pretend you're out there in the grass, um, nature sounds, you know, stuff like that. But spend alone, alone time in nature. You might be sitting, maybe looking out your window, looking at the clouds go by, right? And just, just be with the clouds, okay? But spend that time alone. Spend that time alone and, and get really grounded and sort of, you're taking yourself out of that box, that compartment, right? And, and you're expanding yourself to all opportunities. Oh, cool. Great, Monica. That message just answered her question. Awesome, I knew there was a reason why I was drawing cards today. And, and yes, Donna, love it, love it. Okay, so the medicine, spirit has been trying to, contact you but receive no answer you're too busy with your life and there's too much noise inside your head do not miss the call again make room for quiet time this evening allow yourself to become bored for a little while and you'll be able to hear the important message trying to get through yeah and that was something I was feeling too when I was preparing for this this message that was coming through was that some people are they're just being even though they might be in isolation um, being too busy in our heads, comparing ourselves with others or being frustrated or um, why is this happening to me, you know, type stuff. And just realize it's all happening for you. It's all happening for you so that you can dig deeper. You can dig deeper on yourself and, and think, I mean, got all this alone time, we could go within, right? We could go within and, and really dig into deep about what we are desiring and manifest it. We can come up with new ideas. If you're sitting there and you, you're you thinking about what it is that you want and all of a sudden ideas pop into your head, write them down. You know, or if you've had a dream, write it down. These are these are signs, these are messages for you to, to go forward on your journey, okay? So your vision quest, quest, Ugh, my mouth isn't working this morning. All right. <clears throat> oh yes, the second one. Hmm is lightning. Oh, I never noticed that before. Interesting. Um, this is a decently fairly new deck to me. Um, I've used it quite a bit, but uh, I'm still discovering new things about it. So you kind of get a relationship going with decks of cards, right? And, and those tools that we use. So um, what I just noticed that there is a human form on this card and I've never noticed that before. So that's really cool. All right. Hey, Carol Ann. Awesome. Make sure you watch it from the beginning uh, once I'm done because I'm right in the middle of the cards right now. So good to see you here. Um, all right. So lightning is a second one. And what I love about this is, is that getting charged up and this 
this ball of light, this ball of light, that's within each of us, that, that light, and it can go and just expand and, and light up everything, right? And lightning has a charge to it. And have you ever noticed how excited you get when you get thinking about whatever it is that you want? right? Like be it a business or a relationship or something. You get excited. You get, you just want to maybe talk about it, share about it. Maybe you just want to stew in it like in a good way and you're just thinking about it and it gets you charged up, right? So lightning is giving you that charge to go out there and, and get what you want to, to live the life that you want, right? But what I never noticed before, can you see that there's a person's shape here? Now I'm trying to do it by the camera again, but there's a person's shape here. And how cool is that, right? That is so cool. So, and what I also love now that I see the person's shape there is that that lightning, that ball of light is right there in the core, right? The core of being and uh, coming out of there and just beautiful, just beautiful because that is the, the center, the, the, the power, right? That is the power of coming out. All right. Okay. Awesome, Natalie. I'm so glad you joined us too. So uh, Natalie does have a lot of great ideas. So that's amazing. Okay. So we're going to read this one too. There we go. <clears throat> so the essence. The formidable electrical discharge of a lightning bolt brightens the sky and strikes the earth accompanied by the mighty sound of thunder. This phenomenon has a positive aspect. The light illuminates the earth and the psyche, but there's a destructive side as well. The bolt can burn and even kill if it's too strong. The invitation, the forces of the upper world are investing their gathered energies to ignite you with a new inspiration and creativity. Allow this divine gift of awakening to take root in your being and enjoy a renewed sense of clarity, passion, and vision. And see, that's what I was feeling for you this morning is that I'll read it again because they said it really beautifully. The forces of the upper world are investing their gathered energies to ignite you with a new inspiration and creativity. Allow this divine gift of awakening to take root in your being and enjoy a renewed sense of clarity, passion, and vision. And that's what this is about. You see this person here, if they were to be comparing themselves to somebody else, they would be pushing down that ball, that ball of light, right? They'd be shoving it in the box with them and there just ain't room enough in the box for the both of them. <clears throat> okay, the medicine. Life has gifted you with a destiny that's in alignment with your passion and in harmony with all existence on earth. Now lightning has come to jolt you into accepting your destiny. Let this initiation release what is in the way of your fulfilling your life purpose. Otherwise you'll be bound to your karmic fate. This is a time to be courageous and daring. Okay. And this is what we were talking about before is that nobody is like you. Nobody is like you on earth. Okay. Nobody is like you at all. And you have been gifted. You have a destiny, right? That's why when comparing yourself to others, you're putting yourselves in their box and God knows what's in their box, right? You're, you're here to expand, you're here to experience, right? You're here to jolt the world, whether the, the world be just your family, you know, your kids maybe, or whether the world be your business or the world, right? So the actual world, I don't know. But here, I'll try to bring that closer for you, lighten. All right. <clears throat> And the last one is the sacrifice. Whoops. And we talked a bit about this before, about what we'd have to give up to, to live our dream, to, to go forward and, and experience what we want to experience. It might mean giving up old programs, old beliefs, old thoughts, old ways of being, um, relationships that aren't working anymore. Um, it might mean moving. <laughs> I've done that, been there, done that. I should make a t-shirt for that. There's always sacrifices and I remember, um, so I'm a John Maxwell certified coach and I started in 2013 and I remember John saying something um, that in order to go up, you have to give up. And that stuck with me because I thought of all the times in my life where I basically left behind something, I up leveled, whatever you wanna call it, right? Like I left behind abusive life. 
I had to give stuff up in order to go up. I had to give up my beliefs that I was worthless. I had to give up my beliefs, you know, that I was trash. I had to, be I had to give up beliefs that, that men only wanted to use me, right? I had to give up those beliefs. Um, they weren't serving me, you know? Um, I had to give up relationships with so-called family because they were being abusive. I had to walk away from so much in order to live a life full of love and, and peace. And I'm still on that journey, right? I'm still on that journey. So I am still giving up as I go along, giving up to go up, sacrificing, right? Uh, it's kind of like earlier I said how you're sacred. You're a sacred being. We're all sacred beings and we need to honor that. And I think in order to be sacred, we have to be willing to sacrifice those things that try and cover that up right we have to be willing to sacrifice those things so it's interesting that this card came up of sacrifice uh interesting thing about this is that this card okay come on back here i have such problems on this camera when i'm on live because it's all backwards <laughs> it's backwards day today <laughs> um okay natalie totally makes sense i'm on fire for these ideas she has I had to sit on it make sure i had the right tools for it okay Sitting time is over, okay, Natalie? Sitting time is over. All right, so the cool thing about this card is I love how she's reaching up and there's the butterfly and butterfly is all about transformation, right? Is all about, you know how butterflies, they, they um, start off as this caterpillar and they're crawling through the mud and the muck and the poop and everything, like whatever, right? And then they go into a cocoon. While in the cocoon, they have to totally transform. They have to completely take themselves down into liquefied goop and rebuild themselves. And they come out the other side and they have this, this little body and antenna and legs and, and butterfly wings and these colors of whatever. And they go and they fly off and they live their life, right? They're completely transformed. And isn't that beautiful? Because that butterfly didn't put itself in a box and compare it to other butterflies or maybe birds, right? Butterfly didn't sit there and go, oh my gosh, I wish I was like that eagle. Why can't I be like that eagle? It's no fair that I'm not like that eagle, right? And uh, they just don't do that, right? They do their butterfly thing. They transform and, and they fly off into beautiful butterflies. So it's cool that she's got a, a butterfly there and there seems to be some, some magic around there too. I think that's really cool. And I love the feathers. The feathers indicates flying and, you know, time of transformation, um, 44 is uh in numerology is eight and that's all about abundance right living your abundant life so that is beautiful and abundance of peace love and joy going forward into that energy right also i like how the arm seems to be open um once again that could be male or female i'm just saying she um so you take it how how you want right so uh, let's see here so you can see that card uh, it's just beautiful. Again, there's a sphere around her. Uh, could be a moon, could be a sun. Um, again, it's it's the circle, that sacred circle around her that I love so much. So I just thought there was more butterflies there. But even at that, um, is that stuff falling off still, right? Is she still breaking away stuff that, that she needs to in order to go up and fly like that butterfly? Okay, 44. Hey, Heidi, how are you doing? Awesome to see you here. And Natalie, good for you. Good for you. Okay. Go to page 44. Well, not page, but card 44. Oh, there it is. All right. <clears throat> oh, this is good. The essence. To sacrifice means to make sacred. So when we were talking before about we're sacred beings and we have to give stuff up, in that sacrifice of giving up those beliefs, those relationships, whatever it is that we need to give up, we're making ourselves sacred, we're honoring ourselves. To sacrifice means to make sacred. The sacrifice is an offering of gratitude made from the heart. A feast of love prepared for spirit. In olden days, sacrifices sometimes involved rituals in which blood was offered to the gods. In exa for example, in the Bible, Yewa preferred Abel's sacrifice of one of his lambs to Cain's offering of vegetables and fruits. In middle America, however, I can't say that word. <laughs> I don't know what that word is. Woo, that's a big word. 
And it means the Lord of the dawn came to teach that spirit preferred our songs and our prayers to the blood of humans or animals. Yeah, there was some pretty, pretty um, interesting rituals going on before and now. So, but you know, sacrifice can be songs, prayers, meditation. It can be leaving behind things, um, you know, to, to make sacred. I have a spot out on my cliff just outside that I've made sacred because when I go out there, it is to meditate, it is to channel, it is, it's my sacred space. And if you've ever been to my place, um, if I take you to my sacred space, I tell you before we go out there, like, a, like however many feet away from it, 20, 30 feet away, this is my sacred space. I let you know before you enter it, okay? And there's times when I don't go out there because I'm not going out there to spend time in my sacred space. I'm just going out to um, see the view or something, right? So I will, I will share my sacred space, but I will also sacrifice it for um, just wanting to spend time outside, you know, like because it wasn't sacred for me or maybe I'm just um, doing something else and it's not sacred for me. So I, therefore I don't go into my sacred space. So I keep it as a, uh, as a spot for me, right? To be sacred, to be myself in. And, uh, and I've given up. It's, it's not even a sacrifice. It's more of an honoring, right? Same thing with me personally. Um, when I talked about leaving behind relationships that were abusive to me, it really wasn't a sacrifice. It's what I did, but it was honoring me. It was honoring my time and my space and my, my energy, right? Why would I want to be around people that hurt me or tried to hurt me? Because eventually they didn't hurt me, but they kept trying to hurt me. So why would I want to be around that, right? So um, cut them out of my life and and I just continued on. I still love, but if, if somebody isn't if somebody isn't respecting and treating well, then I don't need that in my life. I just send them love from a distance, right? So honor myself. Um, all right. Hopefully this is uh, speaking to you today. The invitation. Sacrifice asks that you offer to spirit that which is most precious to you. Your offering will be sanctified and returned tenfold. You'll be elevated to the altar at which you've been praying and meet the divine at the table with the heavenly feast. You're a welcome guest in this banquet. Your heart is the only worthy offering you can bring. Life has been generous with you in so many ways. And oh my gosh, is that ever true? Because when I, even just now, I mean, I'm talking about sacrificing relationships that were, that were, um, I had been trapped in, right? And when I sacrificed those, when I, when I honored myself and, and treated myself as sacred, and I didn't allow that in my life anymore. I didn't participate in that anymore, okay, is what happened. All of a sudden, new relationships came in that did honor me, that lined up with that sacrifice that I did, lined up with that honoring that I did. And now I have these amazing relationships that, oh my gosh, talk about soul family and friendships and stuff, right? So, so when we're willing to give up something, our thoughts, our beliefs, maybe in something physical like our home, you know, other things flow in. I, you know, I've said at home a few times, so just in case you're wondering, or if you're going through this, okay, 2016, um, all right, so I lived for 16 years on a beautiful 160 acres um, with a home that I dearly loved, a yard I dearly loved, I was breeding horses, I loved my farm, okay, I loved it, I loved the land, I loved my neighbors, I still love my neighbors out there. And in 2016, I, I was being called to move. And the, the final, the final I don't know what you wanna call it, decision, sacrifice came in 2016. 2016 in the area where I lived, the economy was crashing big time. People were going bankrupt. Um, people were just losing everything. And we put our farm up for sale in the spring of 2016 and it sold in three weeks. And that's a, that's a huge big feat, okay? Because to buy a farm, you got to put a lot of money down with the banks. So anyways, it sold. Didn't know where we were moving. Just knew we were moving south and west and continued to go until we found a place, uh, an area that we wanted to live in. Looked at 13 properties. This property was the first property we looked at, by the way. And looked at 13 properties. I said I wanted some signs to, to help me out. 
and all the signs were on this property. We had written out our list of what we wanted on our property uh, and in our house. And um, after we moved into this property, we got this property, I realized it had everything on the list. I, I when in the unpacking, I found the list and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's got everything on the list. Now, this is not 160 acres. This is not a farm. You know, this is not surrounded by family that I grew up with. This is not surrounded by friends that I grew up with even, you know, and I miss them dearly. But this is what I needed. I was willing to sacrifice my home and my land. And I'm not going to say it was easy, okay, because it wasn't easy at the beginning. But I thought, you know what? I wasn't born with that property. I wasn't born with that. Therefore, this is a gift to me and cannot can something not be better right and if you follow me at all you've probably seen my mountain pictures you've probably seen the great energy around here um the amazing things i've been able to accomplish since i've moved here and still accomplishing and it's all because i moved into an area where i needed to be into the house i needed to be in i was willing to give up those physical things around me and step into others you know um like i say i'm not going to say it's easy and if you had any conversations with me at the time, you probably knew that. <laughs> but it has been a huge blessing. And with sacrifice, with that giving up means going up. Like what she's doing. Giving up means going up. And a beautiful thing happened. So maybe that spoke to you. Maybe that's why I needed to share that. So that's my story. Hey, Lauren, good morning. Yay. Hey, Heather. Hey, Leanne. So the medicine, what is the one person or thing that you feel you cannot live without? Oh my gosh, I just shared my story of living up north that I, I felt I couldn't live without it. Wow. It's time to offer it all to spirit so that it may unfold as it will. Do not cling to the old form or allow your sacrifice to weigh heavily upon you. You've sacrificed yourself and your dreams for too long. I feel like I need to read that again for you, okay? You've sacrificed yourself and your dreams for too long. Now is the time to rededicate yourself to your journey. When you make sacred, you open the doors to infinite wealth. Do not delay. Now is the time to rededicate yourself to your journey. You know, if you're watching this, whether you're watching it the day that I recorded it or you're watching it a year from now, it doesn't matter. I asked what message you needed to hear and this is it, okay? So quit comparing yourselves yourself to somebody else and realize how amazing you are okay let that energy come up and ignite you let your energy because that's what happens you know when we talked about comparing yourself how you're putting yourself in a compartment and shoving yourself down well you're shoving that light down within you you're shoving this light down <coughs> within you and then you can't shine right so step out of that box you put yourself in somebody else's box Shine your light, go on, go on your vision quest and make sure that you're, be okay with sacrificing, okay? I'll tell you something a little bit more about when I gave up my, um, my farm. I had, it wasn't just the land. I had about 30 head of horses that I had bred my whole life uh, and put towards and I gave them up, okay? I only took a couple with me for riding horses. I had to, because one of my dogs was used to running the whole property and all over the place, I gave him to my, to my farrier. That's somebody who does my horse's feet. Um, I had to give up, you know, like my life, right? Uh, what made me me? And I actually had a little bit of an identity crisis and I had to work through that but I was willing to sacrifice it to step into what I needed to step into because I knew on the other side it would be amazing and wonderful. And, and sometimes things that we sacrifice, be it relationships or physical things like a home or a job, maybe an idea, sometimes it can be hard because we're so attached to it. So the trick is to unattach. The trick is to know that what's, what's on the other side is better, okay? What's on the other side is better and to go forward and and to be yourself you know this this whole message of comparing ourselves is is about to be ourselves to to shine that light right to shine that light and glow 
So I hope this message reached you today. And I know it reached some because some commented on it, how much they love. Oh, Lauren wrote something here. Also, quit comparing yourself, yes, to an old version of yourself because they're gone. Right, Lauren? Oh my gosh. Quit comparing yourself to an old version. Oh, I'll just sit in that one for a minute. <laughs> you know? because, because you're not who you were anymore. Let that go and be willing to flow forward. Be willing to flow forward because it'll lead you to the most incredible experiences, the incredible places. Do you know, before I moved down here, I moved five and a half hours south, okay? And when I left my farm and I moved down here, my guides have been telling me to go online. And I'm like, crap, right? You know, go online. Who goes online, right? Uh, who works with people online? I was doing workshops face to face with people and I just didn't do anything online. And um, that was just one of the things. There was a lot of other things I knew was gonna come. But when I moved down here, my location and where I am actually helped me to move online. It helped me to become comfortable with doing videos online like this. And, and you know, it helped me to use Zoom um, in group situations. It helped me to work with people all over the world. Um, one-on-one -on -one sessions, group coaching packages, like whatever it is, whatever people needed, it helped me to go online and work with them. And if I would have stayed up north, I wouldn't have done that, right? It's my actual location that has helped me to go online, which is interesting because now with this virus, a lot of people are going online and I was already comfortable with it. So you never know what's going to happen out of your sacrifice, right? Uh, I just got shivers up me again, those truth bumps. Amazing, beautiful things can come out of that, right? Um, experiences, uh, things that get stripped away that you didn't even know needed to be stripped away. It's, it's beautiful. And it all starts with you, right? With doing what you need to do with your life, with taking yourself out of somebody else's box and expanding and expressing in that most beautiful way. Be that lightning, right? So, yeah. So, like I said, you're watching this at the right time in your life. And if you know somebody who needs to hear it, please share it with them. Okay. And uh, you know, you don't know what you could do for them by, by sharing this message with them. And, you know, if you like it, give it a like, give it a love. And I will see you on the next video. And you have yourself the most awesome day. Okay. I believe in you. You have a great day.